During Wednesday's House Oversight Subcommittee hearing on free speech, Representative Byron Donald questioned a witness about the impact of lawsuits on energy companies. Donald took the opportunity to also call out the Biden administration over recent findings that reveal government officials have been in contact with social media companies about censoring dissenting COVID information online. He decried the White House for silencing Americans and raised concern that it could be happening by other government leaders, both nationally and internationally. Donald's for his five minutes of questioning. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Actually, the in some respects, to piggyback off the last comments by the gentle lady from Massachusetts, I think if we take a look at the legal system, what we have seen in America is that um, it is abused to a large degree. And I think some of the first abuses actually come from um, certain attorney generals that want to take um, energy companies into court, citing climate change and sea level rise as the reason for suit. Uh, with you know, with sp respectfully speaking, uh, you know, to the members who would probably disagree with my comments the fact that climate change is not settled science. Like we're not settled, we're not talking about the theories of gravity or evolution here. We're talking about the, the, the amount to which man is contributing to a change in global temp temperatures anywhere from one to two degrees Celsius. And that science, to every, with respecting everybody in the room, is not clear. What is clear is that the constant move of lawsuits against energy companies does derail projects, it does raise the cost of projects, and those costs are borne by the citizens that we all serve. Look no further than the people of California right now, through a myriad of regulatory policy, and I'm quite sure lawsuits in the past in that state, now the governor is telling the citizens of California they can't cool their home below 78 degrees in the middle of some of the warmest time in California. You know the month of August and September. It's pretty hot out there. So the costs are borne by the citizenry, regardless of the politics, regardless of where people fall on the science of anthropologic global warming, man-made climate change, wherever you want to call it, that science is not clear. I think there were earlier commentary today talking about ESG. Um, as somebody who did work in the financial industry, I will tell you firsthand that ESG policy those, those, um, those uh, portfolios where ESG is run have actually underperformed normal investment portfolios, and the fees associated with ESG funds are actually higher than a typical non-ESG fund. That's the data. Those are the facts. And so there are serious questions where pension, pension plans in the various states should actually be investing in ESG portfolios if they're earning a lower return over time for the pensioners, who typically are hardworking people in every, every state in the country. Mr. Bask, quick question for you. In your interpretation, what have you seen with these slap lawsuits? Do you believe that it's really that we have legal games on both sides of the argument with respect to climate change? Thank you for the question. Sure. Uh, there's certainly gonna be legal games for everybody, but it's interesting that in my testimony, I was talking about one of the chilling effects are states bringing lawsuits against people for their speech and what their actions are in these companies. Yet the examples being used are those very lawsuits that I'm complaining about. In fact, what we're talking about, these slap lawsuits seem to be focused on what municipalities are doing, the government is doing against these fossil fuel companies and also the state of Massachusetts is doing. So I'm not really sure how that's impacting climate activists unless you want to explain that this you know, equates municipalities and the states as a climate activist. So I don't really understand that argument. Um, one thing that I think is really important to understand is that there are trade-offs when it comes to, if you want to go all electricity and you want to get rid of cars and you basically don't want, and you want to import all your energy like California does, it's going to have costs. It's going to have costs to Californians and it's gonna have a disproportionate impact on low-income Americans and low-income Californians get hurt the most um, because they spend a greater share of their after-tax income on meeting basic needs like running the air conditioning. So there are trade-offs, and I think unfortunately we're ignoring those trade-offs and also chilling necessary speech to be able to address these types of critical points to ensure that we protect all Americans. Well, I would, say, I would, I would argue, and thank you for your comment, I, I think that there is a broader concern when it comes to um, officials in government 
who, and let's be very clear, I mean, it's, it's pretty apparent now with everything that's been coming out in news and in podcasts, shout out to Joe Rogan, um, that, you know, we have officials of government who have gone to social media companies about tamping down on information, about silencing dissent. We know firsthand, and it's not the topic of this hearing, Mr. Chairman, but we know firsthand that the White House was working with social media companies and media companies to basically silence dissent with respect to the handling of COVID-19. So if we know that the White House was clearly engaged in silencing Americans through the back door, why wouldn't we think that there are other officials in government, not, a, not just here federally, but around the country, who would silence dissent on climate change? With that, I yield back, Mr. Chairman.